Today, I'm going to be walking you through in how to do a scenario analysis. In the most simplest terms, a scenario analysis is assessing different financial outcomes for different financial assumptions. This is most common when you're doing forecasting, as these are built off of critical assumptions. And the case is that these assumptions are not always correct. To make sure that the financial outcome is viable, you often have to analyze different scenarios, usually in more worst or worst case, to see how the financial outcome changes even when the circumstances are not that favorable. In order to do this, we're going to be building out a forecast of the financials for Shin Financials Brokerage based on the assumptions listed here. This will help you understand the general approach and how a scenario analysis is done and also how to build a flexible financial model to show these different scenarios. Before we start, let's understand what our situation is and the different assumptions. We're responsible for forecasting out Shin Financial's cash flow from year one to year 10. We can see that all cost metrics are subjected to inflation, which is 1.3%. And we have to draft a worse and worst case scenario where the trade volume growth is 3% instead of four, and the trading cost is 1.1 instead of one. Under the worst case scenario, our trade volume growth actually decreases all the way to 2% and the trading cost is increased even higher to 1.2. When we review our assumptions, we can see that our variable revenue is driven off of a commission dollar per trade, an annual trade volume of 400,000 and the base case of volume growth rate of 4%. Our fixed revenue is service fee every year of 200,000 and interest income of 130,000 and a variable cost of $1 per trade. Lastly, we have fixed cost of compensation, license, consulting in general for the amounts listed here and the financial details of the inflation rate and the discount rate that we're expected to use. Let's begin by populating the volume and the rate projections. Let's bring in the inflation rate first. And anytime you build these models, I highly recommend you break out your drivers by every period that you analyze. This is because it increases the flexibility of your model. And for some reason, if in some year, the inflation rate increases from 1.3%, you can simply toggle the figure that you used for the driver. For revenue, we want to list out our annual trade volume. So our year one is going to be 400,000. And our growth rate is going to be 4%. Now that we have the growth rate, we can multiply the annual trade volume by the growth rate. And then for the commission rate, we have 2.95. And we know that the commission rate is subjected to inflation. So we're going to increase the commission rate by inflation every year. The last rate projection is trading cost, which is $1. And we can increase this by the inflation rate every year as well. And now that we have our volume and rate projection, we can now begin building our discounted cash flow. So let's first bring in the commission revenue, which is annual trade volume times the commission rate. Service fee, which is a fixed fee of 200,000 times the inflation rate. And interest income of 130,000. Interest income is a bit interesting because the nature of it is a bit different. First of all, if we keep the cash that is generated on this principle, we can expect it to compound. And furthermore, interest revenue is driven by the interest rate rather than inflation. However, for simplicity's sakes, let's just apply the inflation rate growth on the interest income as well. Next is the trading cost in which we'll multiply the annual trade volume by the trading cost objected to inflation. And then compensation, we have it fixed over here. So let's just bring these in directly. And then let's apply the inflation rate And we can see that we're unfavorable in the beginning, and then we start to begin generating a profit starting from year four. 
So when we are assessing that present value, we have a rate of 4% between the values here. And our net present value is 500,000. However, this is the base case. And we understand that there is a scenario where our growth rate may not be as optimistic. Now, there are two ways to do this. The first way is to create multiple copies of this model and change the assumption based on the scenario. For example, I can create a copy of this tab over here and then change the growth rate to 3% and then change the trading cost to 1.1. And I can already see that the NPV drops by a significant margin. And then for the worst case scenario, I can copy this page again and then change the growth rate to two and then change the trading cost to 1.2 and etc. However, I do not recommend this approach because it reduces the flexibility of how you tackle your forecast. And the better approach to take here is to build your model with flexibility so that you could toggle for different scenarios. You'll often see this approach being taken by investment bankers and people who usually build financial models because having flexibility in your approach makes the model very powerful and to be able to see different outcomes. So let's start here. For trade volume growth rate, instead of 4%, we're going to add three rows under it and we're going to call one base case, worst case, and worst case. And then worst case is going to be 3% and the worst case is going to be 2%. And we're going to set up a toggle right to the side and then create a data validation for these three cases. And the way we want to update this trade volume growth rate is to either XLOOKUP the base case between these options over here and as we change to different cases, it will automatically update the growth rate that you see at the bottom. Another option is to use the offset function. And normally people do this by using the numbers one, two, and three, and I can go over this in a future video. However, my preference is to just use the XLOOKUP function as this is what I'm used to. And then for the trading cost, I'm going to add three rows as well and then create a base case of one and then 1.1 and then 1.2 and the exact same scenario as I've done here I'm going to use an X up on these different cases now what you'll notice here is that I set up two different toggles for two different variables and this is so that in the case that we want to see a worst case in growth rate but maybe a worst case in trading cost, we're able to have that flexibility to change the toggle as we need. And for instance, in this case, we can see that our NPV drops to negative 622,000. And if we were to change the growth rate to worst case as well, we can see the NPV drops all the way to 900,000. So this is a very flexible way in how to build your model so that when you're undergoing a review with your manager or the executive, you're able to easily toggle your situations to see how your financial outcome will change. There are various tips and best practices when it comes to financial modeling. However, having flexibility in your model will definitely make it very strong. I hope this video helped you gain insight to financial modeling and how to build it so that you could conduct a scenario analysis very efficiently. And I'm going to be uploading more educational videos, so follow for more.